have a very special guest. He was key in elevating my very simple music compositions for the adventures of Pili into a masterpiece with Un Recuerdo para el Mañana. I want to welcome uh, Enzo de Rosa, an Italian pianist and composer. And today we will talk about music for the film industry, creativity, and much more. It's good, huh? No, I can't I can't listen now with you. Now now I think is now I think is is soft. Yes, we had we had these technical issues. But let's start in thought. So I'm gonna start with a story and, and you play the sound for it, alright? Yeah, but the piano the sound is good, huh? Yes, it's working, it's oh. working. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Once upon a time, there was a kid. A happy Italian kid. That kid loved pepperoni, but also loved prosciutto. because it could be no other way. Being Italian means family, traditions, and food. And of course, the food. That little boy was born in Napoli, in the vicinity of the Parnepone. Partepone. An iconic city where three mermaids tried to seduce Odysseo with their songs in the Greek mythology. His name was Enzo. And it's been years, but Enzo can still close his eyes and listen to Core Ingrato.
I mix two songs. Very, just very... to give a beautiful uh, uh, tribute to the Napolitan music. Fantastic, very beautiful. So let's start with a with a question. And Enzo, you can you can answer my questions with some words, play music. It's 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 up to you. So my first question is very simple. What is music for Enzo de Rosa? What is music, Enzo de Rosa? It's as the water. Uh huh. The water. Every each moment for me, it's something that uh, come out uh, and. Uh, uh, through the emotion, through the, my life, the experience in my life, uh, and go out through the sound, the music. I am a sort of transformer. The emotion became uh, music sound. So okay, it's, so it's, if, it's if a you part of to... my metabolism, to uh, create the music. If you, if you had to put in music this moment right now, what would you play for this, this uh, live conversation we're having, you and I? And uh, just now, uh, a piece of music, uh, yes, I, I can do this. Eh? Anything, anything, Enzo, this is for fun, you know. And, yes, enjoy. for fun, yes. <laughs> Very beautiful. And how how do you how do you tell a story with music? You know, I'm, I am a, a photographer, so I understand how to organize music to tell a story. How do you organize music to tell a story? Um, yes, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, question. <clears throat> the music uh, I can tell this is uh, as a sort of tools. So we can use the music to express uh, our uh, emotion. But uh, the music, uh, at the difference of the photo, and uh, it's, uh, the, the music is something dynamic. So you cannot uh, put a second of music. You have need of four minutes long. We can imagine the difference of, for, of a photo and a film, where the, the photo is something that you, uh, you freeze a moment. Instead, uh -huh. the film is the narration of this moment. So the music is something similar. A sound that it can create a, a, a freeze, a moment. For example, <coughs> there is not, nothing else. Instead, the music is something where you can uh, uh, express uh, the human being, uh, the natural dynamics of an emotion. For example, we can start from a very very quiet. We can choose uh, if uh, ever to become something uh, beautiful. Or instead So, same passage dynamically can transform in different, in two, two different way. Or uh, can become something completely different also. No? So, uh, depends. Uh, we can use the same element to go in different direction to use a different emotion. And uh, also, for example, the same music uh, can uh, be used uh, for a different uh, purpose. For example, uh, it, it, it's a function of manipulation or transformation. Uh, in, when there are the female propaganda, the war propaganda that was from the Nazi, uh, if you can see the, the video of uh, Nazi propaganda, there is a lot of music of Wagner, some heroic music. It's all the 
soldiers that go to war to the win and conquer the world. But uh, the just to uh, to make uh, to transform uh, the feeling of uh, of a demoniac uh, uh, aggressive uh, of the war uh, transform is something beautiful. Something so uh, so uh, Enzo, how how would you make an interpretation of a, a field? full of flowers and, and butterflies and birds. How would that sound? Like uh, if, if there was a, if, if like a girl is walking in nature and is seeing the trees, the birds. Yes, there is, there is a two why. One, it's something, uh, it's uh, didascalic, descriptive. So I can, uh, for example, <laughs> Instead, I can uh, instead to be didascalic, I can use uh, a music that describes the inner emotion of the girl. Probably the girl, uh, it's uh, we can see the birds, but the girl it's sad, and there are the birds around, and she is sad. So it's interesting to create uh, uh, a music that uh, enhances this kind of uh, particularly. Uh, sensation, something that is happy around you and you instead are sad. So I, I can uh, do this, uh, something that starts uh, uh, quiet. Very, very interesting. And, um, you know, there, there are movies that they're on our minds, right? And, and, I, and I just started thinking about uh, these movies um, and I realized that I can close my, my eyes and think of scenes like, for example, the movie La Misión, The Mission, and I can still see in my brain and in my heart the Ave Maria Guarani or the waterfall scene from Ennio Morricone uh, in that movie. Why is this music so so powerful? Why do you think when you combine the visual with the sound, it takes you somewhere, but also stays with you forever? Like, uh, like those uh, yeah. Italian suites that I'm sure you still remember today. Yes, yeah, uh, <clears throat> this is a very, very great film. <clears throat> it was interesting. Uh, uh, this film because uh, um, w was the first collaboration of the director of Mission. Now I don't remember the name, but I remember the story that uh, Ennio Morricone was a bit upset about uh, how the level of the music was used. It's quite low in the film. You can just listen a, a bit, not it's so uh, powerful and present as the music itself. So he asked to uh, to put the volume and it was a uh, director, no, I, I like that it's uh, as a, a bed. But anyway, when you listen, when we listen to the music uh, alone, uh, it's so powerful and probably it's more powerful of the film itself. 
is in fact the, the, this two piece of music, uh, Ave Maria and also Gabriel Oboy, the team, the name uh -huh. of the composition. It, it, they became also more interesting and more important to the public, the great public of the film. So the people know, a lot of people know the, the music, but they don't know the film. Sometimes I play in concert this music, and all the people are surprised. They ask me, but it's a beautiful music of Morricone. What is the film? And I am surprised, but it's from Mission. For me, I assume that all the world knows this film. But instead, a lot, all the world knows the, the music. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful piece of music, and so uh, all the world know this music. There are many singers that create, that make a vocal version. Uh, a rose among thorn. A lot of important singers they sang this uh, this music. This piece of Ab music. Absolutely, I, I can tell you that I used to study with this music, and uh, and I still remember. I still remember today. Uh, so that's why I say, like, when you combine visuals with music, it stays with you for a very long time or, 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 or forever. Um, and I would like to, to talk a little bit more about the process of how you compose music for a film, right? <coughs> uh, and Enzo, because, you know, the, the audience we have, they, they may not know about music. Can you give us some samples so we understand uh, what is in your head and in your heart when you're composing. So somebody sends you and they say, yes. we need yeah, to... There are, there are, uh, yeah, yes, uh, it's, uh, this is the core system of my activity. Uh, the first thing is uh, it's the human relation with the director, with the people. The human relation is uh, important because uh, for make a good film, it's important to have a good connection with the people. The good connection, it's important to have a good communication. So a communication where there is no ego, there is, a, there is no cliché, there is no racism, there is no age. It's just the communication of two souls two soul that have needed to join their force, their spiritual force, to create something bigger of each of us, the two parts. So this is the most important challenge. <coughs> and all my effort at the beginning in the search, it's searching with the people to have a connection. Uh, means that uh, we have something, uh, do we have something to share? Some idea, some personal emotion, some connection. Do, uh, we have something to share with the world, with the people. It's uh, very important uh, to share with the people this. Uh, it's something that helped the humanity to grow up. Um, and this is very important. And these are, these are questions that are capable to open the part of the spirit of each people and the search to open channel. And the, through this channel, something magic happened. The, the, uh, the, the door of a human being, the door of spirituality, the door of a deep personality. So the first thing is uh, it's uh, cut the ego, cut uh, all the cliché of, uh, of, uh, of the society, this, uh, they, they are very dangerous in a good connection, in a good artistic relation. So when uh, I create uh, this, uh, I, 
I created a good connection with the director, everything became very easy. Just yesterday, <clears throat> I started uh, uh, to working on, on a new film with a, a young American director, and um, it was a wonderful, collab wonderful starting collaboration. We collaborated for another film before, uh, and uh, this was a very nice experience. Uh was a success in communication. And uh, now now we start better because uh, we make a treasure of this uh, all the uh, other collaboration. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we make a, a, a beautiful uh, meeting about 40 minutes uh, talking with this new film. The, the director is Jennifer Coney and uh, the film is With the Fire. So, and, and, and Enzo, uh, if you remember, can you play us uh, uh, there's somebody saying uh, that this interview is great. Uh, I'm going to put it here. Somebody is, is connected and they're saying they're, they're enjoying. So that's, that's fantastic. So Enzo, can you play a little of that collaboration you, you did with that same no, director yeah. in the past? Yes, I, I will, but uh, I will. I, I like to tell just uh, speedy the, what we talk about in this uh, meeting of yesterday. Just yes. Okay. Very okay. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, so uh, we talk. This film we talk. Uh, I ask to to her, what are the topic, the most fundamental things of this film, and this film uh, she tell me. And so, we talk about the true and authenticity. That's all. I, okay, perfect. So, we um, it's a film about uh, the. There is a very interesting quote that uh, one of the characters in the film tell. This is what is the opposite of the life. The opposite of the life, not is the death. It's uh, the fear. It's interesting. This this opened me a lot of connection because uh, when, you, when you think about the fear, what is the fear? The opposite of the life. When your life, you are authentic. You are authentic. You talk with the people. You are yourself. But when you fear, you are hurt. You start to hide yourself to be. You became hypocrite, and start to live as a hamster, no, in the well that he ever in the life started to rotate all the life without to live. So uh, the fear, it's uh, one of the most important part in the, will be in this film. Eh? And uh, one of the character uh, is uh, she tell, uh, I have fear to be too much authentic. <laughs> it's incredible. So we talk about uh, the human being, the true, the authenticity, the fear, the abandon, uh, to, to judge the people, the fear of to be judged. The, so, 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 so I understand. So, the first so thing we you talk do... about this, you know, the connection of beginning of the film. We don't don't talk about the music. We yeah, just you mean, start you... to put in to put together. We stay on the same field of emotion of the concept. This is was started. Uh, so, so there's the, there's a, always a, a conversation with the director or the person in charge. So we both are at the same level of understanding of the the human yes. essence of yes. that movie and the emotions that they go with those visuals telling the story, right? That's that's the yes, first exactly. time. Yeah. So we don't start with the music, uh, this, you know, just to create a beautiful connection. But now come back to the audience, the task, what the music, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the, the listener ask, yeah, no, no, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. No, we, we want to hear these things. What I was asking you is like, if you could play us the music that you created for that same director in the past, a, a yes. little bit. Yes. So. Yes.
this is uh, the team um, the, the team of Falling and uh, this was the main team from uh, from the film Rainbow's End uh, and she was this film was produced from uh, from uh, Joe Landino, it's an uh, American producer and uh, direct, uh, directing from uh, Jennifer Coney. And uh, so, you, so can, you can find a, a video on YouTube of this song uh, with the, the, this performer uh, that sing the song, because this is the main song of the film, the theme of very, the main song. Very beautiful, Enzo. So the basically, <coughs> thinking about the process, uh, so you have a meeting, you understand the, the emotions uh, that you have to put into the music. So both the director and you understand the level of sadness, happiness, happy environment, but very sad on the inside. And then how do you start working that technical aspect, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn piano for the last two years. Yes. So uh, for I mean, example, now, uh, uh, when, uh, when, when, um, uh, we talk about uh, the hamster, no? This uh, th this little animal that uh, all the life run in the hamster. So uh, the, the the challenge is to transpose the music and give it the feeling that you are trapped in a, a fear ambient. So fear ambient, I I I, I could like to do it in this way. This is going to be a very music for uh, a people that live in the in the fear to be himself, no, to trapped in a in a, uh, a mental loop. And what actually, <clears throat> it's very interesting. You're talking about a uh, fear because in the last um, interviews I've done, uh, we came to the conclusion with with many artists. Uh, photographers, videographers, musicians, uh, that many times what you want in life, it's on the other side of fear. So, uh, as you say, people get trapped in their own reality, uh, like, like a hamster, uh, like in a wheel, uh, and only when you go to the other side of your fear, you find what you're what you're trying to achieve artistically. Do you agree? Um, yes, uh, now the first thing is, uh, I, I think, but the, I think that it is uh, uh, also to be an amateur, for an artist, it's, it's quite different because I can uh, live the fear, but the fear is a part of the, the, the life 
So it's quite it's something about to survive. I think that the fear is more uh, a signal, a signal of danger. So when we have fear, it, it's the moment that we have to call our consciousness and discover what this this signal means. We have a fear of something that happens the way we don't know. We, it's unknown. Uh, I have fear of the, make this challenge. I have fear to do this experience. I have fear to fall in love with, the, with this person. So, yes, but, it's but, a, but what I mean, but, Enzo, is no, I agree with you. What I mean is that you have to overcome that fear to achieve all those goals, right? Like sometimes people get, they cannot jump over the fear, they get stuck. Yes, but anyway, the, the question of, yes, it's true that there are something better over the fear, but the, the question is how you uh, jump to the fear. You cannot jump the fear. You have to see in the face the fear. And you have to understand why the life give you this signal of fear for what reason. And you have to manage this signal. And you have to discover Absolutely. what it means. You cannot just jump or okay, I I will go. No, why? No, this why is a very important <clears throat> question. You cannot go over the fear. You have to, uh, for example, the fear of this interview. No, because uh, uh, it's normal. No, I have fear the interview with the Kiki. Wow. So what uh, helped me in uh, in uh, go over the fear instead uh, enjoy this interview. Uh -huh. it, it's just uh, I the signal that the life. Yes, you have to talk about yourself with the people. What could be important uh, to to the people or yourself? And the reply I just told, it's the authenticity. For me, a challenge to be authentic, to be myself. Uh -huh. To don't tell I am great, uh, no, just tell the time from Naples. Uh, I play a Napolitan song. Uh, I love Morricone. I can play the piano. I can improvise. Uh, I simply um, express myself. Uh, and this is the, the, my reply to the fear, to be myself, just I, uh -huh. I am. I am with this shirt, I am living in this apartment, this is my piano, this is the way that I play the piano. Do you like? Yes, you like? No, not is different. For me, I am <laughs> in this way. I am so, when you have this approach to the life, the, the fear cannot touch you because uh -huh. the fear is just the perception that you have to be different from what you are. I, I, I understand, Enzo. And returning to Eno Morricone that, uh, that you mentioned, who yes. passed away two years ago. Yes, <clears throat> incredible. Yeah, it, it was so crazy the way that he died. No, he falling in the apartment. And three days after, it's, it's a fracture on the femur, femur it's, it's the leg. And you have, uh, at this age, when you have this, uh, this kind of fracture, it's quite a condom. I'm so sorry that uh, so inglorious to die. It's, I am very afraid of this, sorry about this great loss in this way. But anyway. Um, and, and, and Enzo, can you talk a little bit? I know you're Italian. He was born in Rome. And, and I always thought he was a genius of music. Whenever I, I listen to his music, he transports me uh, somewhere else. So. Uh, why do you think Ennio Morricone was so special with his music? And, and maybe you can talk a little bit about Ennio Morricone while you play the piano. Can you do that? Uh, yes, I, I, I quite know all the music of Morricone I can play. So and I, you... I can play also in all tonality, in all key, because uh, this is... Uh, this means, uh, mm. I can play it on. I can play, no, so I know so well that I can improvise. No, no, I know. Different I arrangement. Know. Because <laughs> because we're we're live and I want to make these interviews so people enjoy. What I'm asking you is, can you play something from Ennio Morricone and talk at the same time and tell us why Ennio Morricone was special? I have a play and talk. Uh-huh. 
Oh wow. <laughs> so maybe maybe something something very simple. Uh or play a little and stop and tell us a little bit about why you like the Morricone and then play a little more so it's it's dynamic and, and people can can also listen to your talent because I, I think people should listen what you do because I love it so um so um I don't know why Morricone is uh, great. Uh, really, I, I, I cannot tell. Uh, uh, the first thing is that he creates something very, very important team in the film music that are joined to very important film. <clears throat> Sometimes the music that he wrote, uh, it's, it's most more important, more great of the film itself. For example, Very important now, it's, it's, it's very nice. It's very interesting in Morricone that uh, he's a very great classical teacher, great, great classical musician. So he have a very strong, uh, um, strong uh, basic training as a classical composer. And um, um, what is uh, nice in his music is that uh, at the right moment, the film music he, he became popular because. Uh, if you listen, for example, his concert, the trumpet concert, it's very dissonant. It's something completely different from his film music, the, the classical composing uh, uh, live of uh, Morricone. But after in the film, for example, Once Born in America, he became so popular. It's a melody that all the people can uh, play. Simple, so effective. It is a team, uh, one of the most important team of uh, Morricone, and it's so simple. Uh, after he Maybe became because, very... because Enzo, many times in mu in music, it happens the same thing with photography or or film. Simple sometimes is best, right? Something very yes. simple can be very powerful. Yes, uh, it's uh, this is a very famous quote from uh, my friend Jennifer, the director. They tell they tell every moment in the music tell and so less it's better. So, <laughs> so it's very fun, funny. But there is one. Uh, there is another thing is very interesting. This is, for example, it's a chord. No, it's a seventh chord. It's something that uh, I play uh, in the pop music. It's very normal uh, uh, chords. And uh, never a composer, uh, classical composer, uses this chord. Instead, the Morricone, what uh, he did, he take this chord and create one of the most beautiful melody in the film music. So he have eyeball to create a 
a popular environment, harmonic environment, and put a, one of a beautiful, like, sort of, uh, melody. It's a very classical melody, so it's a very interesting to join. But I will explain more at the trick of Morricone. But this, uh, as uh, I think that you know, it's uh, the main team from uh, the film Once Upon uh, in America. Uh -huh. no, this is was before, Once Upon in the West, sorry. And uh, remember the film, uh, it's a Western film, Western spaghetti film. Uh -huh. And Morricone creates a lot of team for this spaghetti Western. One, this is the most famous, uh, but there is, this is... Uh, this is very famous uh, about the uh, western film yes yes and i, and I, I hear it's, that music and it takes me right to those <coughs> it, it's interesting how how music can become so embedded in people's mind that you listen and boom automatically it takes me to like a like a like but, the west right I have a personal um, experience with Morricone, and I I meet him, and I ask to him, uh, uh, Maestro, I would like to. This is many many years ago, at the beginning of my career, and I ask to him, what I have to to do for became a, a film a film score composer, a film music composer, and he asked me, do you can write a fugue? The one, <laughs> fugue. Cioè, fugue is a fuga in Italian. Yes, una fuga. fuga, yes. Una fuga. This is one of the most complex uh, composition, uh, in style composition, form of composition. Uh, means uh, that, that we have a, a team, and uh, there are another music, there are another voice that repeat the same things and start to, to join together, to run each other. Huh? Another thing, another example of fuga. This is the famous fuga from the Toccate Fuga in the mirror. This is the main theme. Second team, the same team but a different key. Again the team. my younger study so <coughs> play the fuga it's very so was a very strong advice from Morricone to me because uh, I understand uh, that the film music is just uh, uh, using the same team in different way in different key in different uh, speed uh, faster and uh, we can see all this work of Morricone in this uh, I can see in the work right? there is for example very fun very not is very famous. It's a film. No, no, it's a film. It's Vatel. It was a film on uh, Depardieu, and they uh -huh. talk about a un cuoco. He make a beautiful uh, food. It's a film. I don't ten, uh, fifteen years ago. Like a but, chef. Mm, I I don't remember very well, but I remember the team Vatel. And the theme of this music, it's a... Uh, it's, uh... mm -hmm. This is the main theme of the film. And I discovered that this is... Uh, Morricone take uh, this uh, 
uh, theme from another famous composition, that is the, the Ave Verum of Mozart. But he did a, a very interesting trick. So he took uh, the just the introduction of the, this Ave Maria, the, I will play now, but uh, the speed is the half. Mozart used the same theme, but half speed. We uh -huh. can tell also that uh, Morricone used the same theme at double speed, but I will play it. This is the Ave Verum Mozart, the introduction. Start Ave Maria. Morricone and it became another theme. Take mm. no? And he did for with many film music uh, um, this kind of, of things. There is another example that I can do, it's very funny. Uh, there is a play, the music is playing love. This the film uh, Il pianista sull'oceano, the pianist uh -huh. on the ocean, no? And this music playing love is. Uh... Very beautiful piece, Absolutely. but uh, was was funny that in the same period of time there is in Italy a very famous song, pop song. It is uh, sung from a pop group and after also from a very important singer Mina. It is uh, my uh, the singer is My Io Ote the name, and the the the, the music is uh, I don't know who, who created before each other or Morricone or this uh, group rock group, but the music is. Uh, Instead of playing lower, it's exactly the same, but the Morricone continues another way, the other composition continues a different way. So I don't know what, uh, what, what the other, each other uh, use the same ta ra ra ra. <laughs> so it's, but, it's, very, it's very interesting, and so that you're saying pretty much that. <clears throat> many of the compositions that they were created, they're based on something else and their adaptation and changes of, th of things that are already <clears throat> masterpieces. Yes, there is a, a lot really of good, these, right? there is a lot of these tricks, no? Uh, <clears throat> so it means that sometimes the music uh, uh, are became a reference for another track. And also this, uh, uh, honestly, it's a why of the, one of the best way to communicate uh, in the film industry, because uh, um, it's very different from to talk uh, from a director to the musician. Uh, it's uh, using the same vocabulary. So the best way is to uh, use uh, the same reference point. Uh, okay. There is a, one famous example. 
um, it's uh, the collaboration of Nino Rota with the Frenzy for Coppola. And when they collaborate for uh, for the Godfather Part Two, there is uh, um, Frenzy for Coppola asked to uh, to Nino Rota to use a team that is uh, from uh, uh, from the opera Puritani, Donizetti. There is a piece with the trumpet, with the orchestra. And uh, he told the Turino that I like a lot this composition. I would like that this, this kind of composition it became uh, the theme of the emigrant, the theme of the, the, the Godfather part two. So, and and so what, 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 what you're sorry to interrupt, but basically what you're saying is that because the director has one language and the composer has a different language that the, a clever thing to do is to find something as a reference so the yes. musician can understand what the director is thinking exactly. in terms of music, right? Uh, at the end, just for uh, the curiosity, um, the theme of Puritani Donizetti became this. Uh, From Godfather, very famous. We played with the trumpet. So this happened because uh, we start from Donizetti with uh -huh. reference and uh, uh, using the same mood, the, the instrument, the orchestration, near Rota creates something that it's. Uh, not like a clone, but something that keep the same essence of the same uh -huh. emotion, feeling of the other composition. This is very, very common. This is a very a drive a very good communication using uh, some reference. Notice uh, really a copy. No? Notice it's different from a copy. This is uh, uh, it's very uh, healthy things because uh, I think that uh, if you, we don't keep the secret from the the masterworks we not are able to go over to, to go over the masterworks so means that uh, uh, in my opinion uh, this theme uh, it's something that it's uh, it became uh, as a masterworks better over the original puritani because uh, as the capacity of neo rota that was a very incredible composer great composer it took the, the essence of this composition and bring it to another level in create something that have the same value. So it means that Inoroda took the, the, the technology of this creation of Donizetti and manipulate and create something different. And it's, uh, this is a very big, uh, big transformation. It's uh, the best attitude and capacity of, to a composer. To understand the technology of the other, and create something uh, at the same level. Uh, this is like, incredible. No? Like science, everything is based on what has been done before to move forward. Uh, exactly. It's uh, something uh, scientific, but the great challenge is that when you have a very complex equation or a very complex uh, machine, uh, not, it's very hard to understand how it works. No, the people probably don't know how work the change of the of the bicycle or the or in a car. You can imagine how to to apply some technology discovered in a different context. So this is the great uh, challenge for my composer to 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 have uh, inspiration from a beautiful uh, uh, team and create something uh, to uh, different, but the, the secret is understand the technology that this uh, first composition was created. Uh -huh. What the chords, uh, what, how the composer created the melody, what was the inspiration, what is the chords, the inspiration, the structure, uh, the dynamic, the development of the each element of the composition. And the, you, you, if you are not trained to understand what you listen, you cannot create something uh, more. So this is uh, a quote from uh, Francis Bacon. Neil is, uh, Neil is intellectual quote prius not for it in sensu. It means it's a Latin quote. You cannot uh, uh, create something bigger of what you that. Uh, 
sorry, <laughs> you cannot create something bigger that don't pass through the sense. It means that if uh -huh. you are not able to understand what you, you list and you don't create, you cannot create something uh, uh, bigger. It's the uh, same in the photo. If you are not a uh, knight uh -huh. that you are uh, uh, trained to understand the proportion, uh, the color, uh, the figure, the position in the in the frame of the the, the character, the people, the the, the deepness, uh, uh, all the regulation of the camera. There are thousands of little elements. But if you are not trained, you never can uh, create a, a photo uh, that is uh, better. Absolutely. Of, uh, of the great photographer, you uh, you cannot do because you haven't uh, the tools uh, to create something better, some something uh, more important, more creative. So the, this is a, a one of the element of the creativity, the very important for me. It's the development, uh, the, the the your perception of the reality. Absolutely, and and Enzo, because somebody just sent me a message via WhatsApp. They're, they're watching us they're, they're asking me if if you could play a couple of your f your favorite uh, um, songs included in in, uh, in movies if you had to play two things not the whole thing but just a, a portion what would you play us something that yes. you relate to oh. what you think is beautiful or complex yes. or it's up to you I start uh, from uh, one team uh, that I composed for my first uh, film that when I moved in Montreal. Now I am in Montreal. It's, uh, what time is it? It's uh, 11.25 in, here in Montreal. It's cold. We don't know, <laughs> we don't know if uh, the summer will come in Montreal. You know that it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a funny, funny weather here. Now it's uh, before raining, it's cold. In the, probably in the rest of the world it's uh, hot. Instead, uh, I have a, uh, I don't open the air condition. No need. It's cold over here. So <laughs> enjoy. My... So, <laughs> so what? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, uh, in a, in a... hello. Are you there? No. Um, I'm here. I'm here. Here. Yeah. No okay. No, I, I lost. Uh, so when about the, the my first collaboration here was uh, was with uh, uh, an incredible director from Chicago, Lucia Mauro. I'm, um, this was a very incredible experience in meeting her and started with the collaboration. <coughs> so um, we know each other through internet because at the beginning I was when I moved here in Montreal I don't know people I don't know how to develop my network so through internet I I, I meet uh, this uh, this director Lucia and we start a very deep friendship we stay from a lot of times uh, five six hours at the phone to talk about arts culture uh, a lot of things and uh, what happened that Lucia asked me to make the mu to uh, make music for a short film in my brother's shoes it's a very nice story about uh, uh, a day uh, it's about a, a soldier that uh, died in the in the Iraq war a day at home of the the father and the brother came a box with a couple of boots the boots of the brother, the only things that remain uh, uh, of the brother with the dog chain. So the brother uh, started to uh, have the idea to uh, to go in the place, in the same place, in the same city where the brother visited and sent to him, uh, sent to him uh, a postcard. So he go in Rome, uh, and in Rome uh, uh, with uh, at the feet the boot of the brother for make a last travel. He um, uh, he go in the same place, and uh, was a very moving uh, film. And uh, at so can, end, can uh, you play Enzo? Because there yes, are yes, play the main team. Uh, just because oh, I just enjoy a lot. Me Hello, they want to hear you. The team, uh, the team from my brother's shoes uh, of uh, director Lucia Mauro in 2014, and uh, I, this is very important. Uh, uh, the film, uh, the short film, uh, won. Uh, 
the best as the best movie at uh, the Mirabile Dictu. It's the Vatican uh, Film Festival, the only one in Vatican, and won uh, the best uh, as the best short film. So this is, was very very beautiful thing. This is the team uh, when uh, the actor uh, uh, go in Rome uh, and go on Gianicolo and see all the Rome, uh, the beautiful uh, skyline of Rome. <laughs> Very beautiful, Enzo. So let me ask you because you know my batteries will not last forever. So just uh, I'm having an issue with that. So I want to play a game um, with a game of words that I play with all the guests here. So I want to tell you a word, and you can answer with words or with music. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. I will. I will. I. I have to reply with the words or a piece of music. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So the first, the first, uh, the first one is San Genaro. Sa I San, don't understand this word. Sa San Gennaro. Ah, San Gennaro. <laughs> San Gennaro. Fantastic. So people are sending you messages. Wallis from Colombia is saying beautiful melody. Uh, so there, there's people watching. They're watching us, so you know, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on uh, on YouTube, from different places at the same time. The next, the next word, um, uh, Enzo, uh, oh solo e mio. I played before, but just for the people, San Gennaro is yes. uh, the patron of Naples. So uh, it's very important to us, to me, because it's the, the patron of the Naples, uh, and it, there is a lot of story joined to San Gennaro. It's very important for the people that decide to go in Naples to see the the, the cathedral of uh, Naples, or the, the San Gennaro, and there is a very great treasury. There is uh, under the the cathedral there is a very one of the best treasury in the world. All the donations they give to the sign, it's a stratospheric, incredible uh, uh, treasury of uh, beautiful stuff. Oh, okay, allora, so. Uh, Os Osole Naro mio. Osole mio. <laughs>
Wonderful Enzo. There's people logging in. They're coming from different countries. <clears throat> There's somebody saying we cannot do it now, but if you want to do it, we can do it another day. People are saying if if I can show my photographs or some of my photographs and you can put music behind my photos. So if you want, we can do it <laughs> yes. another day. <laughs> we, I, we can I, have to, I have to prepare. But Julio Cesar uh he's saying beautiful awesome and it's from a latin play country i don't know which one uh probably colombia so uh let me give you another another word or another name if i say giovanna daffini giovanna daffini uh maybe uh bella ciao uh the folk song do you know it yes but john i don't know this name giovanna daffini but, he, I, th I think he. I understand that he wrote uh, the fourth song of Bella Ciao. Ah, right. Fantastico. And, and Enzo, if, if you had to play, uh, let's say, three small pieces, right, of uh, Italian songs that everybody knows, but probably we don't know the name, what, yes. what, would, you, uh, what would you play? The first, piece, the first piece of music that we play is this. I think that you know this music, no? I know the music, but I don't know the name right now. But it's... No, no! <laughs> this is one of the best uh, important, not famous, important song, because the name is Mamma. Yeah, oh yes, 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 absolutely. It's beautiful. Mama, like oh yes, yes. Actually, why I, it's important? Yeah, absolutely, because... I use actually that music in one of my presentations with my ballerinas. Yes, remember I'm, I'm taking here and the biotics for my cold so my energy and my yes. brain is a little slower yeah. though, so yes, yes. but uh, um, this uh, mama because uh, you know for all latino people uh, la mama is così important it's so important so it's a very important music very important topic for italian the la mama <laughs> ab ab so, absolutely so this is the first thing the second song that i like to play it's uh, the song that it's uh, the song of my parents uh, they know yes. each other dancing this song and this is uh, one of the songs that uh, it's a part of my life i play on the organ when my father died mm -hmm. but, uh, it was very moving for me playing this music and also uh, it's a characterized characterization of my family it's the the name is ti voglio tanto bene i love ah. you so much <laughs> Thank 
Very beautiful. Nice. Cara, ti voglio tanto bene. Very, very beautiful. And another, another one, people are asking me for more. So we we can continue <laughs> un, until the battery caputi. And then if I yes, disappear, uh, it's because we don't, have, we don't have any batteries left on my side. Uh, but I have a, a couple of more questions and people are asking me if, if, if you want to play another Italian song, anything, it's up to you. <coughs> An Italian song? Uh, <coughs> uh, I like to play something from the classical repertory uh, of Italian song. The, the, the song that came before the Second World War. Because uh -huh. uh, after the Second World War, uh, there is a sort of uh, great influence from American uh, uh, cultural, um, uh, the rock, the pop. Uh, so there is a sort of contamination of uh, this uh, of this, Ita this Italian feeling. But before uh, the Italy have a very strong uh, uh, style of uh, of song. There is, uh, so uh, Mama, for example, it's one. Uh, it's one of these. Another great song wrote from a great director Victorio De Siga, the great actor. It's a, it's a very nice composition. Uh... That song, Parla mi d'amore, Mario. Speak uh, about love with me, Mario. Mari, Maria, Mary. Uh -huh. It's a nice, great song. This is a very Italian style, very precise uh, Italian feeling of the music. And I'm a bit sorry that after that, uh, the music, the Italian music, became a bit more uh, American, a bit more uh, lost uh, the the roots of the great melody that joined directly with the great opera, you know, the Puccini, Verdi, Donizetti, Bellini. And when we listen to the great opera, uh, of Italian opera of the 18th century, 19th century, there is a so beautiful theme that inspired a lot of uh, composers all around the world. I make one example. For example, there is, yes, please. There is, one, very, there is one great example in film music where Chaplin, he uh, still grab the music from Puccini. Right? This is a uh, thing that wow. uh, the people don't know too much, but I play the example. Uh, there is uh, from Tosca, there is uh, this uh, very famous melody. Charlie Chaplin, when he wrote the film uh, uh, Lu uh, Luci della Ribalta, Luci, um, Luci della Ribalta, I don't remember the translation in English, uh, Limelight, I, think, so. I, I yeah. don't remember the in English. Um, he, has, he wrote, uh, he composed the music himself, but he worked with an assistant and he tell me, he tell to the assistant that, I have need a music that uh, it's uh, the same uh, feeling of this uh, area of Puccini and uh, we started to create, improvise and after a while what uh, come out from this manipulation 
So I will play Puccini and after I will play the music of Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> So I mix said the Puccini and the Smile of Charlie Chaplin, the fa famous song from the film. Uh -huh. So it's very, very same, same things, some notes are changed. It's a very great game of Charlie Chaplin using the music of Puccini. Very, very interesting and thought. So a question for you. Imagine, imagine that I, and this is not planned, this is completely improvised, like most of this conversation. Imagine, yes. imagine that you and I, we go and eat in an Italian restaurant, right? Yes. And, and we order uh, Italian food. What yes. music it would be perfect for that conversation, that place when we're trying to understand Italian culture, conversation, uh, Whatever you can eat, uh, gnocchi. I, 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 I am sorry. Eating for Italian, it's something religious. No music, nothing. It's just. Well, then, the then, then you have to play something religious, you know, like uh, what would I listen to when I'm eating gnocchi sorrento? Hello, <laughs> now there is a very precise relation. So I can play for sure. Uh, okay. Torna sul rientro, no? The famous Napolitan song. And you can eat uh, gnocchi. Alla Sorrentina. <laughs> Okay, right. so that's, that's perfect. I have one more. So instead of eating gnocchi sorrento, I, I order os, osobuco milanesa. <laughs> as a Napolitan, it's very hard. You know, you know, there is a great competition, Milano and Naples, no? Of course, so, of course. All the, all the, all the, I know. I know you're a, a, a true artist, a true musician, and this is above egos, remember? I can play the most famous uh, song from Milan. You know, in, uh, in Milan there is Il Duomo, very famous uh, cat. Yeah, yeah, I've been there, yeah. And there, and there are La Madonnina, it's, it's a very La Madonna, it's a little statue on the top. Uh, of the one of the place uh, of the cathedral and uh, the and the composer i don't remember the name uh, composer oh mia bella madonnina oh, oh my beautiful madonna <laughs> Very, very beautiful. And somebody is asking me, I think they're, uh, they're asking me if you can play a tango. <laughs> yes, hello, so, my yes, I, 
this is one of my interesting skills because I am a Napolitan. So in Naples, okay. you know, there is a special relation with the authority, with the special relation in, in, in don't follow the rules. It's a sort of indiscipline. Uh -huh. No, and this permits me to have a very different approach to the music. So I love uh, classical music. I am training at the Conservatory of Naples. I'm graduate. I study with, uh, make my training, classical training, composition, orchestration, and other stuff. But the way I follow electronic music, uh, tango, I follow Napolitan music, I follow Balkanic music, uh, Chinese music, Japanese, Indian, Arab. So I completely indisciplinated in following one just uh, uh, streets. For me, everything is so nice, so beautiful. So it, uh, I cannot uh, transcribe the tango. It's very important. I will play a, a tango of Carlos Gardel. Sure. I love. And the Poruna Cabeza. This is one of the few song, Spanish song that, the Spanish word that I know, por una cabeza. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, uh, hasta la vista, por una cabeza. It's Finnish, my, my Spanish vocabulary. <clears throat> but I hope with you can, we can speak, uh, we can teach me a bit of a word. Oh, of course, of course. This came from also a film. Uh, the film is uh, Scent of a Woman with Al Pacino, and this is a tango that, uh, it's a very famous tango that came from the center of the film, when there is a challenge <clears throat> that uh, Al Pacino started to dance uh, with this woman, with a young girl, a very beautiful, uh, just uh, feeling the, the smell, the, the scent of this woman, that they play, they play a tango. It's a very, very nice scene. Allora. <laughs> Fantastic, Enzo. And there's more people connecting, okay? So we have people from different places here. And, and I can play asking... another tango, eh? I can play another tango. Ah, Beautiful. sure, go for it. Yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> this is a tango that came another, from another film of Charlie Chaplin, uh, Luci della Città, and is, uh, is a very, uh, the name of a composer, uh, Giuseppe Padilla, por, por, uh, Tango della Violetera. José, José, José Padilla, Tango yes. de la Violetera. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
It's a beautiful film uh, where uh, this uh, soundtrack. So you remember the film where there are the girl that was uh, a vo- that was was uh, blind. Yeah. And uh, Charlie Chaplin give the flower, uh, see her, and uh, after he pay for um, for make a surgery to the eyes, uh-huh. and that day the girl open a, a boutique of flower, and the day Charlie Chaplin pass uh, through the, the store. Uh, and um, and she look at this uh, Trump and they give uh, uh, some money and the same time he touch the hands in the moment of touching the hand he understand that he he was the man that pay give money to her and uh, he, uh, he and she tell are you it's very uh-huh. touching and there is this music. Uh, it's a very, very nice uh, moment. Very beautiful. And then, so we have Julio asking us if you could play Arezzo in La Toscana. A- 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 adesso. Arezzo in La Toscana. Arezzo. 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 Arezzo is a very nice uh, city of Tuscany. Toscana. It's uh, in the Florence, uh, something that's joined to Florence. Uh, Florence. Uh, uh, there is uh, something about Tuscany, Florence. Uh, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> okay, uh, let me give you another option. So, <clears throat> somebody is is saying, uh, you know, obviously, do you know any Colombian songs? Because they're asking me if you can play La Pollera Colorada, but obviously this is... <laughs> no, no, no. I know, no, I, I know. I am, I am very sorry. If uh, I, if a director from Colombia uh, contact me for make a music about the Colombian music, this will be a file. I am very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wh- what about the, they're mentioning uh, Rio Vadillo? So these are very particular things. So it's kind of <coughs> difficult to do improvise. So you say you 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 had like formal uh, training in the conservatory in Napoli, but you like all kind of music, electronic. Can you play something that is uh, modern, different, Japanese, Chinese, something that is unexpected from like a, a classic pianist? Can you something that? <coughs> Oh, uh, something uh, very different. Um, um, as a pianist, uh, uh, so I composed the, the music for uh, um, for uh, one of the best, the greatest park in Asia, in uh, in um, uh, <laughs> in Thailand and Phuket. Uh-huh. Is Carnival okay. Magic, Carnival Magic. Uh-huh. And uh, so they hired me as a Western composer to wrote the music for their attraction park. It's one it's of the great past in Arca. Now for the pandemic it was closed, but uh, I hope that they can open again. Kalio and Magic. And they hired me to compose the music for all the parade. The parade are all these great ship that go on the river in uh, Thailand. You know, all these uh, special yeah, I, 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 I flower, work in Thailand, uh, oh, yes. Yes, all this dress, uh, very, very, they sent me all the dress, uh, the picture of the elephant with all these uh, people uh, with the uh, Thailand dress. It's very, very strange for me, but because they like to have a kind of music that have to be very accessible from the Western visitor and sometimes keep the character of Thailand, Thai music. So uh-huh. I started to study Thai music and put uh, uh, composing music for this parade using uh, Thai element. It was a very good challenge. I work for, uh, with them for one year and a half. I composed oh. a lot of music for their attraction. And uh, this is uh, the theme of the mine parade. So they, there is a lot of ship on the river. It's a royal parade. Uh, um, uh, all the ship did all the special uh, gold, uh, this stuff, uh, uh-huh. Thailand, you know, a lot.
little example. You in some scale, uh, some chords, uh, something that you, you go at the park and uh, you can feel the emotional music from the western side, but you can recognize there is something from this. Country. Absolutely, absolutely. And somebody is asking us if you can play anything that sounds Brazilian. <laughs> but it's quite easy, no? <laughs> Very, you remember this, huh? Ah, yeah, yeah, very, 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 everything is very beautiful, Enzo. So let me ask, let me ask you something. Uh, this was the music from Orfeo Negro. It was the, the very nice uh, Brazilian film. And very this beautiful. And this won the Oscar as the best uh, soundtracks. Okay. The, I think it's in the 1964 or 68, I don't know, Orfeo Negro. My, my, okay. Nice, nice story, nice film, nice music. Yeah, so Enzo, we, we will be needing to wrapping up soon, but you know, you and I, you know, I, uh, we became friends. We initially connected through that uh, very simple composition that <coughs> I, I created, Un Recuerdo para el Mañana. You helped me uh, elevate it <coughs> and turn it into a, a beautiful piece for, for cello, violin, and piano. Uh, can you still remember a little bit or, or no? Uh, it's why, you don't, why you don't tell before? I, I call it the famous <laughs> call. <laughs> I, I, I arranged it for before. cello and violin, uh, try to, to change the pizza. We, uh, it's quite complicated to play cello, violin, and the piano together. So. <laughs> no, no, I, mean, I, 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 I meant the, the piano portion, but I know this is improvised, so I'll, I'll ask you. But, but I, I would like instead to make a, a challenge, live challenge. It's very hard to do. Yes, so, I, like, uh, I like challenges. All right, the way, uh, one of the, my best uh, secret skills uh, I call as a music photographer. Uh -huh. I mean, this is uh, what, what we have in something in common. So uh, if uh, people ask you to make a portrait, you know, and you, you, uh, you take, a, <coughs> take a photo with your camera and you give it a portrait, I can give you your port port musical portrait. Okay. And uh, what I have need, uh, it's some four note. You give me four note or four number. It's the same, no? One to one to seven. The seven name, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, I, 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 
I do, can give you, I can give, I, so, I, I can give you the I can give you the notes. I can give you the notes. And so uh, what means uh, that I use these four notes uh, to compose a, a piece in real time uh, that um, it's uh, your uh, portrait. Okay. The the the. the, I, the, the the only thing, Enzo, because I'm star I'm I'm studying piano or trying to learn, and I know I, I know we have like a minor and major and all these things. Depending on the notes that I give you, is gonna sound different. But uh, but let's let's do <coughs> let's do uh, uh, G, which is uh, sol. Oh. Yeah, sol. Um, let's do uh, um, do, you know, like C. Okay, so Quindi, that's fine. One, uh, uh, so I need to give you uh, you uh, uh, sol C. Okay, let's do um, improvising C, like C as in uh, la, C, si, do. Okay. Is it? So I, I still need to give you one more? Yes, as you like. You can give me three, four, no, five. No, I think I'm reasoning because depending on the ones that I choose, it's going to sound different. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm no, thinking. No, no, don't mean, sir. The, yeah, okay, I am, so let's, let's, do, uh, let's do Re. Re, okay. Do, do, Re, so that's a Do, Re, Sol, Si. Okay. Now your numbers are 5, 1, 7, 2. Uh-huh. Because it's the corresponding sol, it's five, do, it's one, si, it's yeah. seven, re, it's two. That is and uh, for me, for me, it's uh, the music is mathematic. So it's a calculator. When you put inside some number, they start to elaborate. So it's something that, uh, uh, and the, the the interesting thing is that you you give me this number. So this this number are expression of uh, of you. No, as DNA, no, it's something that you create, and so if I start to elaborate this number, I start to elaborate something that is part of you, no? through my sensibility. And uh, sometimes, uh, where strange, where strange things happen. So I, uh, this I play this note, or. Uh, So the the music the I will choose this. Uh, this is the f the four note that you give me. Uh -huh. and so the the game the challenge is I have to create a, a melody a piece of music that use this uh, four note. Yes. And create a a theme a melody. Okay. Hello.
That was fantastic, Enzo. Uh, thank you so much. A beautiful, But, beautiful uh, look, musical look, portrait. Uh, that, uh, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I all our discussion, your photo that you sent me about Amazonia, about your travel in the north. Uh, in yeah. uh, was a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, gift that you sent to me and. Uh, This inspired me when playing. I can imagine the Amazonian forest. I can see this great uh, ice place full of ice. So very, it's your very, portrait, this, eh? Very beautiful. You, you, you surprised me with with this one. Thank you. You're you're a true artist, my my friend. Um, so so we need to come to an end, and so and you know I always close all my videos. Um, With, with, with the guest, uh, you know, I always say never stop dreaming. I like people to reach their maximum potential and also that they always dream, you know, dream about things they would like to do because, as you know, life sometimes can be complex. But if you're always dreaming, you're always alive with emotion and what is going to come next. So uh, how would Enzo de Rosa say never stop dreaming with music if you had to to play or say, never stop dreaming, how would you do that with, with music? Uh, I like to, to, to start uh, with the, one of the simple pieces of music that a pianist starts. Uh, because when I listen to this music, uh, I, I was so excited, uh, I was so inspired to be a musician, to be a pianist. And also, I can see that my son started to play, and not is very good, but he started to uh, to try because he are fascinated from the same note that fascinated me. So this uh, this note became a way to to never stop dreaming and then try and try again and try again and try again to do what you like. And so I like to play this uh, piece of music that. Uh, It's very important in my develop of dreaming. Uh -huh. It's a composition from Beethoven. Thank you. 
Very beautiful, Enzo. Um, I, I, I have another challenge for you, and this is going to be live, okay? But um, I need to stand for a second and find something, so I want you to play piano, like, for two minutes until I come back, because I'm going to grab something, and I'll be back in camera. So can you play something else for, like, a, a couple of minutes until I return, okay? Yes, I will play uh, what you like, what I can play. Yeah, well, anything, your choice. I'll be back in a second because I want to, I want to, I want to do like a, a live uh, challenge here. So, uh, yes, play something. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Beautiful Enzo. So this is the challenge for you. I'm going to give you some, uh, some very, very basic compositions, right? In case you know them. Uh, you, you play one if you know, and then in the future, I'll play the same one. I'll try to play the same thing. Okay. okay. So I'm going to add my level, of course. So I'm going to give you some names of things that I can potentially learn. So the first one that I could potentially do with my style is Allegretto number one from Cherny. Can you play that one? Yes. Let me know the score. So it's <laughs> tin tan 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 tan. Yeah, so uh, it's just in case you know, like, I, I, wa I wanted to, uh, hold on one sec. Uh, okay, let's stop, okay. <laughs> Something similar, no? <laughs> Hello, yeah. This way. Something similar, you can play yes, in this yes, way. Yes. So, you know, I like these real life challenges because this way people <laughs> can enjoy. What about, <clears throat> and we're almost done here. What about uh, Au Clair de la Lune, the uh, Jean Baptiste Lully version? Do you know this? Ah, si, sí, si, sí, sí.
So that this is my challenge. Kike, the non-musician, one day will come and play these two songs in response to my my friend Enzo. <laughs> yes. All right, Enzo. So I, I think we we have to come to to an end. Um, but sorry, you you can play, but you have to play in this way. Yeah. Hello. Instead of to play this, you have to play this way. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's, that, uh, that's going to take me a few years until I can respond to that one. But uh, yeah, I, I accept the challenges. Maybe 20 years from now, I'll connect to YouTube and say, hey, Enzo, I'm going to play this, this song for you. Uh, so we're, we're coming to an end, Enzo. I hope you have enjoyed as much as I, I have. Uh, very different interview, as you've seen, from what you've done before, possibly what I've done before. Uh, you want to add something, you want to play something else, like this is your moment. As I said, uh, you're extremely talented. Since I, I met you, I always told you. And uh, yeah, what, what else would you like to, to say or play before we go? No, I, I think that we tell, uh, tell enough in terms of what... Uh, Okay. Uh, we can uh, say hello and uh, goodbye to uh, all uh, our uh, audience. Absolutely. Our last, so, uh, uh, with so a we... sort of souvenir, so a sort of music uh, that uh, can uh, can um, put a little sweet in, uh, in our mouth. And uh, as Italian, as to be very proud to be Italian, I like to close with uh, not really Italian, but Napolitan music because I am a okay. Napolitan. It's a Napolitan that is so different from Italian. It's we yes. are another culture, we are another heritage, we are uh, Mediterranean people. So we keep all the the heritage of this uh, thousand of year around the, sea, the same sea. So okay. uh, as a Napolitan. I like to say goodbye with a beautiful uh, Napolitan song, and um, Napol and you you know I know all the Napolitan song because uh -huh. uh, when I was six years old I go on the legs of my mother, and my mother teach the music, and we make a challenge, and my mother told me if each song the Napolitan song that you learn I give you money, so I became very rich because my mother. <laughs> I learn all the song and I play with the one finger. No, all the Napoleon song. So now I know. But what, what I what I play I like to play now. It's it's an Napoleon song that's uh, uh, from the thousand that I, I know. I'm quite. Uh, I I don't know what I have to play, but I can um, suggest me a thematic of it's Napoleon. Okay. It's okay, Anenzo, but before you start playing, I just, I just have to say that, you know, uh, Spanish jamón serrano is better than prosciutto, but we, we can talk about this in, an, in another interview in the future. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just yes. kidding. So, but, yes, uh, ja, jamor, ja, <coughs> prosciutto is something more of the north of Italy. No, I if, know, I know. We, if we have to deal, uh, you have, we have to deal about... Uh, Frutti di mare, sp spaghetti a vongole, uh, it yeah, is very, very Napolitan, very cool, uh, no, the, the fish, the, this is the very challenge. We can speak about uh, if it's better la paella or okay. it's better uh, or uh, gamberoni arrosto and spaghetti a vongole. Probably there is a, this is called to be a, a great Okay, problem. okay, okay. That's, more, problem. that's more fair. So, <laughs> Thank you so much, Enzo, and, and we will finish with what you have to share about uh, music <coughs> from, from your hometown. Yes.
Very beautiful, Enzo. So I, I just want to, to thank you for, for sharing this time and all your, your talent and skills uh, with us. So it's a pleasure. Hope... It's somebody, it, the talent is something that came from outside, uh, saying us uh, produce a beautiful fruit, uh, and after we have to pass uh, to the next generation. So Absolutely. it's something that uh, we have to share uh, with the other people. It's the only way that we can uh, live, uh, sharing uh, our uh, gift. Absolutely. So I just want to say, everybody, thank you for uh, spending almost more than two hours with the Italian uh, pianist, composer, and musician, Enzo de Rosa. Um, thank you for uh, watching another episode of Reflections with an Accent. And if you like uh, a portion of this whole video, I hope you will share it with friends, with family, and you will leave comments and hope to see you in the future. And please, never stop dreaming. Mm -hmm.